Hello my friends. Happy New Year. I hope you enjoyed your holidays. And uh, you all enter 2024 in full of hopes. And I hope perhaps hopes for restoration of the things which you never fulfill in the year 2023. This morning I want to share with you my first sermon of the year and the title of my sermon is making up for lost years it comes from the book of Joel chapter 2 verses 25 part a which says that I will restore to you the years that this swarming locust has eaten from you friends the book of Joel gives us a detailed story of what happened in the land of Judah. There are several things that can be restored. Money can be restored, the money which was lost. Property can be restored. Cars, painting, old houses, relationship can be restored. But one thing that can never be restored in is time. Time flies and it does not return. Years pass by and we never get them back. Yet there we find God promising the impossible in the book of Joel chapter 2 verses 25. That I will restore the years that the locust has eaten. As I said, the book of Joel gives us a detailed story of what happened in the land of Judah. It is all about the army of locusts which attacked the land. God's people had suffered the complete destruction of their entire harvest throughout swarms of locusts. That much like an insect army through the fields. Destroyed the crops, multiplying their numbers as they went. And it seems that for four consecutive years the harvest was completely wiped out in the land of Judah. God's people were brought to their knees in more ways than one another due to these calamities. The Bible says in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 18 to 19, that the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. God said that, Behold, I am sending to you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied. The promise of all the good that God will do for his people continues line after line in this wonderful promises. The enemy who has taken advantage of the weakness of God's people in the land of Judah will be removed. If you read the Joel chapter 20 verses 20, but chapter 2 verses 20. And the animals that were groaning do not need to fear because the pastures of the wilderness are now becoming green in Joel chapter 2 verses 22. If you get time, you can read. And also the children of Zion can be glad and rejoice because rain has returned to nourish the ground. This one also you'll find in the book of Joel chapter 2, verses 23. And all this story leads up to its climax in verses 25, which marks the someone of my topic today i will restore to you the ears that the locust has eaten what this meant for these people was that god will give back the harvest that had been destroyed in the coming years and that god said their field will yield 
an abundance that will make up for what had been lost. The Bible says in Joel 2, 24-26 that the threshing, floor, the threshing floor shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Friends, this was a wonderful promise for these people of Judah. And it meant that years of abundant harvest would follow the years of desolation brought about by the locust. But God has put it in the Bible for us today. What do lost years look like for us? How can God restore the years that locusts have eaten in our lives? Lost years or locust years are years that you can't get back and they, come, and they come in many varieties. Let us look at these years. The years that the locust has eaten it from us, according to the book of Joel, chapter 2. The fruitless years. Year number one is the fruitless year. Many of us have had a fruitless year. A lot of hard work was done in the years that the locusts had eaten. According to the book of Joel, people saw crops were planted, fields were cultivated, day after day of hard labor, and out of it came green shoots, healthy plants, and the promise of a great harvest. Then the locust came and everything was gone. All this work, and what do I have to show for it? Look at what I put, hours of labor. Some of you know what that is like in the world of the living today. In the world of business, a failed venture, a bad investment, a misguided policy and all the effort that you put in day by day, month by month, year by year, led only to massive disappointment. And what has come of all my time and all my effort? How did I end up with only this disappointment? The fruitless year. Maybe last year you had plans for some investment. You had a plan of some expansion in your life. You are to get married. You are expecting to have children. You are expected to get healed. You are expected to get a uh, mean employment. So on and so on. But it didn't bear the fruit. That is year one. Year number two, a painful year. A painful year. I'm thinking of those who have lost their loved ones in the last year. You had plans for the future. You had it all mapped out in your mind. But then a loved one was taken from you. You hope this year will be full. But now you fear they may be empty. I am thinking of also those who live with illness in the body. Or the mind. You assume that you will always be able to do what you used to do. But then you became sick. And your condition has made your ears different from what you had expected. It can happen early in life. You move into high school or you move into college. And the thing that you are really excited about is getting on a, on a sports team, you make the cut, but then you get an injury and it keeps you out for the entire season. You say, I will never have my junior year back again. It is gone. I lost it. It is a year that the locusts are sitting. You have to find a way of living with that. The painful year. There are things which happen in our life in the last year which was so painful to us. And we don't expect them to continue with us this year. Another 
year that the locust has taken from us is the selfish year. Yeah, it's a, it's a story that has been repeated several times. There was a person, a young, a man, a young man, who made a commitment to Christ, but it didn't run deep. Faith in Jesus was a slice of the big pie of his busy life, filled with all the things that he wanted to pursue. Then one day, God gets hold of him. He then be spiritually awakened. He started to look at his life and he said, this whole thing has been about me. Now that he, uh, he is awakened, he sees what other people are doing to love and to serve and to sacrifice for the sake of Christ. He says to himself, what in the world have I been doing? There's no substance in my life. I really wanted to count for Christ. I wanted to live in the power of the Spirit. I wanted to make a difference in the world. But the locust have eaten half of my life. I've wasted my years on myself. You've been living a selfish life. A life which is not being corrected. A life which does not listen to people. That does not accept correction. Another year... This loveless years. Maybe a division comes to a family and there is an alienation from a loved one. Years are lost. Children grow up. And what might have been cannot be recovered. Loveless years. Some know what it is to quietly endure a marriage in which love has been burning low for many years. You see a couple who are really in love. And you wish, you say, I wish I could be loved like that. Years have passed and you can't get these years back. It feels like the locust have eaten your love from the marriage. Or you have not yet met the person that you would like to meet. And it feels like the years are moving on. You can never get them back. The locusts have eaten them. Then there's a, a rebellious ear. A rebellious ear. Perhaps you have been like the prodigal son in the Bible. You grew, you grew up with many blessings. But in your heart, there was an instinct to rebel. You did fully understand it. But you gave yourself to it. You threw yourself into a life that was the opposite of what you knew was right. But instead of bringing you pleasure, it brought you a pain. Now you look back on those years with regret, the years that the locusts have eaten, the year of rebellion. You rebel against your system. Then we have a misdirected years. Misdirected year. And this is where many of us fall. You followed a path, but it didn't work out the way you hope it will be. The path you choose in your career or at the college too was a dead end. You found yourself in a place where you just didn't fit. Now you look back at your life and feel you should have made a different choice. In your mind, and sometimes in your conversation, you say, how did I end up here? And you find yourself saying more and more, if only, if only I had made that move, if only I had taken that opportunity, if only I had chosen a different path, but the moment has passed, it is gone. You can't go back to it. You are left with the locust years. Then the last one. The Christless year. Some of us live a Christless year. We never bothered to go back to God, to take it all to Christ. All Christless years are locust years. This is worth thinking about if you have not yet made a commitment to Christ. Ask anyone who came to faith in Christ later in life. 
and they will tell you that they wish they'd come to Christ sooner than they did. How much foolishness I would have avoided. How much more good might have been done. There are many, many, many ways in which we came to a place of feeling that years have been lost and we can't, then back, we can't get them back. And God says in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses, uh, verses uh, 25, that I will restore the years that the locust has eaten from you. I will restore the years that the locust has eaten from you. Friends, that Bible gives us a promise this morning. As we move into the fourth day of January 2024, there's a call for you to make a paradigm shift into your life so that God can restore the years that you have lost. There are extraordinary promises of God in scripture which speak directly to the heart and our soul. John 3.16 is one of the examples of big promise that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That is well and good. But perhaps one of the best verses in all scriptures that I've ever read that speaks specifically to the restoration of our life, restoration of our soul, restoration of a sinful person made clean by God's amazing grace and mercy is found in the Old Testament book of Joel chapter 2 verses 25. And the context which this verse is written comes in the midst of God bringing forth judgment through drought and locust infestation against the land of Judah. In the land of Judah, the people had taken God and his blessings for granted. Faith had degenerated into an empty formalism and their lives into moral decadence. To Joel, the locust plague was a warning of a greater judgment that was coming unless the people repented and returned to fellowship with God. If they did, God would pardon them and restore the health of the land. How true of our lives today. We are people who consistently and if we are truly being honest with ourselves and apologetically take for granted the blessings and grace of God by choosing our sinful nature over God. And this is how many of us had lived in the past year. We decided to choose our life, to choose our own way over God, to do things our own way and to refuse to let God walk and go with us. And that is why we failed in the year 2023. But here is a promise that God is going to restore all those that which was lost. If only we repent and turn to God. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 6 <coughs> verses 1 to 2 and verses 13, 14, if you read, that what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passion. Do not present your members to sin as a as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness, for sin will have 
no dominion over you since you are not under the law but under the grace. For the most part, those who have accepted Christ, free gift of salvation, do not intentionally conspire to sin against him. But we are often lured to sleep by living momentous and mundane levels of spiritual vigor which leave us feeling incomplete and distant from God. We always live our own life. We always do things without putting to God. We, we always forget about the grace of God. We always forget about time with God. We don't have time to create space with our Maker. Friends, quality time with God through Bible study and prayer is often replaced in our life with extracurricular activities or work responsibilities. We give priority to those so much that we forget that it's God who has given us opportunity to work. In other words, God has simply been squeezed out of our daily lives because a relationship with him is often viewed as convicting and condemning rather than rewarding and fulfilling. But the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 17 that, Look carefully, then how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. We fail to understand the will of God in our life in the last year. We have believed the lie rather than the, to kill the serpent. serpent. Why then should we be surprised by the lack of joy we feel in our soul based on the health of our spiritual relationship with him? Friends, this morning I want to tell you that the true beauty of Joel chapter 225 that we have just read is that God was... And God still is merciful towards his people, if only when we repent and turn back to him. If you want God to restore all that is lost in your life, we need to repent our sin. Because he was the same God who restored the land of Judah. It's the same God who will restore your land. Undoubtedly, like Judah, we do not deserve his grace based on how we respond to him through our thoughts, words, and actions. However, to those who are willing this morning to return to him with broken and repentant hearts, he is willing and able to restore his eternal joy and blessings that once were traded for the pleasure of this world. Friends, as I wind up, when I reflect upon Joel chapter 2, verses 25, I'm burdened with immense regret for the blessings we traded over the years by indulging in sin particularly the sin of pride and lust. Whether major or minor, we were, and we are still, a habitual sinner in that we do not have any armor of God with us. Securely fasted and prepared for battle at all times. Honestly, we all are Habitual sinners because we commit sin against God every day of our lives in one way or another and continue to make those same mistakes. The real question is whether we have repented of our sins and more importantly are actively pursuing God's wisdom by eliminating those sins and temptations from our lives. 
The Bible says in the book of 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 9, that the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. God wants you to prosper. God has a good life for you. He has a plan. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah that he knew you before you were formed in the womb of your mother. He brought you with the purpose. The only thing we need to do is to repent our sin and live, walk according to God's will into the vision, mission, and the plans we are having in our life. Therefore, God has promised to restore the years that Locus has eaten from you. But we must do our part by choosing to accept his unmerited grace and mercy. It is all comes down to a choice. What choice are you making today in your life? In this day four of the year 2024, what are the choices are you making? Are you making the choices of the same mistakes you made last year? The choice of refusing to let God do it? The choice of refusing to listen? The choice of doing things your own way? Or the choice of repentance, accepting God, and allow God to walk with you into your plans? Oh, our God is merciful beyond measure this morning. And we have the power to accept this promise. He has given to us, being made whole again through Jesus Christ. Let this scripture be in our mind. You can have time and read it all. But remember, in 25, that I will repay you for the years that locusts have eaten. God will repay what you have lost in your life. The great locust and the young locust, the bigger things you lost and the smaller things you lost all together, as long as you present yourself to Christ, he's going to pay you back. You will have plenty to eat. Easier. Until you are full and you will praise the name of the Lord your God who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be shamed. Do are his people? The people who believe in him, the people who repented and trust in him and trust in Jesus. Then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and that there is no other. Never again will my people be ashamed. If you don't want to be ashamed in your life again, if you don't want to disappointment, if you don't want to fail, if you need expansion, the progress, peace, joy, love and reconciliation, it is time for you to repent. It is time for you to take it to the Lord. Accept Jesus as your personal savior and walk with him in your life and you shall see how prosperous you are. May God bless you as we continue with our journey in this year. It is a new year that God has presented to us. It is like a free book. You have been given a free book to start writing on. The pen is in our hands. The pen is in our hands. What to write is in our mind and our heart and soul. A company with the repentance and acceptance of Jesus as your personal savior. Walking with God. Things will never be the same again. And I always, and I keep on saying, this year will be the year of more and more and more addition into our life. May God bless you. See you next time.